This is Ready News Review, the podcast. And now, now. America's independent voice, Rob Ready. Rob Ready. Well, I appreciate you because you said some important things in your book, Turn Your Common Sense into Business Savvy. And among those things that I was most struck by is a chapter where you deal with presenting yourself, the presentation of self. Like you talk about the fact that you should not have uh, tattoos. You talk about the fact that you should, when you are considering going in, wear the right clothes, that you shouldn't use slang words, that you shouldn't have uh, bad habits like not making eye contact, bad hygiene. This seems like it's common sense, but that's the whole point of the book, right? <laughs> exactly. I think um, having been in the industry, the restaurant business, as a general manager for the last 10 years, um, believe it or not, I've seen a lot of people come in looking for jobs, and what seems to be what should be common knowledge um, is not. So, um, you know, I decided to put it in the book as a chapter. Um, and in this day and age, a lot of people have tattoos and, and things of that nature, but when you're walking into a job environment, it's important to understand that, you know, you should cover those things up and find out what their tattoo policy is before going in for the interview and, and, and allowing them to, to prejudge you by, by your tattoos. For instance, Starbucks will not hire you if you are in a situation where you refuse to cover them up. Like, they will not allow their employees to bear any tattoos. I don't know whether you know that, but... And some people don't know that, but you never see anyone with tattoos working at Starbucks, and that's because they have a policy. Absolutely correct. There's a lot of uh, industries that won't allow you to have certain tattoos. They'll actually um, force you to cover them up with makeup, um, whether you're a male or female. So, Or they'll have you wear long sleeve shirts in certain situations and things of that nature. But, yeah, I think it's very important that we don't get uh, confused by what we see on television and, and on the Internet about you know, stars, uh, you know, making a lot of money and having pretty much tattoos wherever they want to, and now the youth and some other um, areas think that it's okay to do that in the job environment. So, and they run into trouble. So, so doing a Mike Tyson, you know, with with a tattoo <laughs> on the face, not a good idea. Unless you're Mike Tyson, baby. Unless you're Mike Tyson, that's great. Uh, unless you're like a, a, a wrestler or something, maybe that might you might work with that. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, but let, let, let me just say, you know, there was a time when tattoos were prison culture, you know, and, and it was, or the thing that you saw sailors with, and people judge you, and they still do. I've seen articles about it. They judge you as a result. This seems like something that black people, especially young black men have, and some women, have really decided that this is something that they really want to embrace. But you're already overcoming an extra barrier of being black, first of all, uh, and that's a barrier to, to, to overcome. It seems like it, it would be common sense to not to do this to yourself, to kind of do yourself in to make it seem like you might be in a gang or you might be somebody right. that they not, may not want to talk to. Well, see, this is, this is the, and you raise a great point there, and this is the reason why I wanted to write this book and to reach the youth is because – when I was coming up, we did things to go against the norm, right? We wore, you know, sneakers without laces and, and things of that nature. But we never really put anything on our bodies that were permanent. And I right. think this is, I think this is, um, it, you know, it's cultural. It's a thing where they want to go against the status quo, which I understand. I, I did it when I was younger. I don't know if you <laughs> uh, went about that when you were younger. But uh, this is not the way to do it. Tattoos is not the way because it's permanent. And now, right. 20 years later, 30 years later, you're, you're stuck with this tattoo, not to mention you've been labeled for the last 30 years on top of that. So, I mean, it's something now, you have to be very careful with. Now, I remember the, the, the time back a long time ago when just to have a hoop earring was a big deal for a black guy. And, we, you know, we had Ben Bradley on 60 Minutes who popped up with an earring in his ear. That was just like, that was a big thing. But even though I remember up, that. I remember yeah. that. It was a big you know, deal. You know, a guy shouldn't have an airing, and it was a it was a, a question of whether it should be the right air or the left air, or it should right. be both. And <laughs> yeah, and that was. And now we're talking about uh, kids with tattoos on their face, teardrops, yeah. and and things of that nature, which we all know what that means. 
you know, yeah. and, 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 you know, these are the Wait a minute, I thought I knew what it meant, but what does it mean? <laughs> I mean, in certain areas, it means, you know, you, you put in some, you know, you put in some time in the prison or you've, you know, oh. did something uh, of a felony or, or something to that nature. But, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah. So, I mean, things of, of, of that nature with our youth, I don't think that they realize. And I mean, so I didn't realize when I was younger what I was actually doing and what it was saying about me as a person. And I think that's why the book's so important, because it talks about being successful, not in a monetary way, but being successful with believing in who you are and who you can become. And it starts from mm-hmm. within. And I think that's mm-hmm. what they're missing. They're looking for something outside to define them, but they should be looking for what's inside to define them. Well, that's a good point. Let's talk about what's inside, because what comes out of our mouths tells us what's inside, too. And Ebonics has become very popular in the popular culture. I remember it's something we used to talk at home all the time, you know, what's up, bruh, and, you know, you know what I mean, and just, just crazy stuff like that. We, you know, we used to stay at home with our parents, but that seems to be, like, out in the street now. Yeah, I mean, again, this is, uh, and I don't know if it's calculated. Some people would argue. I've, I've read articles where they've argued that this is a calculated um, strategic plan to promote rap music and promote Ebonics to, to make it seem like it's okay so that they will never open up the book, which is a, a book, or, you know, speak properly, which is something that has plagued our community for a long time. Um, do I agree with that? No, I don't agree with that. I think that the fact that it's mainstream is because we're the number one consumers out there. We're the one buying all the products, the cars, the clothes, and they understand that. So how better to reach the people than to speak their language? And I think that's what you're starting to see. So that's why it's becoming more mainstream. So this also can, though, hamstring some of our younger blacks. I mean, you know, we talk about names. I, would, I talked about this yesterday a little bit on the show or earlier this week, or a little bit on the show, talked about how names like Taniqua or, or, or Camry uh, won't get the job interview over a Jason or Jill or Scott uh, because they look at the resumes. And, you know, now, I mean, you know, servers and busboys used to have and used to be in the restaurant industry um, used to have just high school, you know, or, or GEDs, but now they have college degrees because Absolutely. jobs are so few. So when you when you thumb through re- resumes and you look at you know uh, Juanita, you're already looking at maybe a no callback, or if you have if you have a resume that says perhaps you know that you are Sigma or Delta, that tells people that you're black. Absolutely. So when you do get the interview um, and you get in there and then you start. You know, dropping, if, if your name is Robert or if it's Joseph, you know, then if you do get to that point, if you get in there and you start talking about, you know, what you want and, you know, what y'all looking for at this job, you know, that exactly. kind of thing, exactly. even if you don't have the chats, then what happens next? Here's, that's, a, that's an interesting point. Now, having done, you know, hundreds of interviews as a general manager, and I'm seeing these kids, not only African-American or minority kids, I'm seeing kids from GW, from, you know, Georgetown University that are coming in that are not interviewing properly either. So let's, let's, be, clear, let's be clear on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also want to touch on the fact that, yes, your name as a manager, as a general manager, it's not supposed to be um, talked about. But it is happening. They're judging you based on your name, based on where you went to school, based on whether you have a, a, a high school diploma, college diploma. Even your handwriting is, is being judged. Handwriting. But even your handwriting. But one How? thing that I uh, – well, it's not. How? Okay. Okay. So <laughs> when you fill out an application, if you've had proper penmanship, then that's perceived that you went through the proper schooling. If you're, you know, you're spelling words incorrectly – um, you know, when, when the questions are being asked on the application, if you're asking, uh, if you're answering them in, a, in the wrong manner, punctuation is not in the right place, things of that nature, you're being judged on that. Um, and I don't think people are aware of that. But one thing that I notice that is becoming a trend, and I think, it, it, you know, it can help you and it can also hurt you. But if you have a name, let's say, you know, these kids are born, they didn't create the name, it's the parents. So let's say you have a name, you, you mentioned Shaniqua or something to that extent. What I'm starting to see yeah. now in the industry is that people will send out a resume along with a picture. 
And in that picture, they will be dressed appropriately, dressed professionally, and most times, you know, good looking, whatever it may be, most times that will get them the interview that they're looking for to see if they can speak correctly. Now, of course, you have to have the experience, you have to have the background, all that stuff has to match as well. So they'll overlook the name. But it is an issue. Hmm. That is interesting, very interesting. Uh, th there are lots of highlights in this book that I could go through, but what are some of the things that are takeaways that you think are some of the most important things in the book that people should know? I think that, I think the, that the, the, the most important thing is the five principles. The five principles themselves. It's an easy read, and it touches on everything. But, you know, you can't, it, you can't depend on people to be successful. It doesn't matter if you want to be an entrepreneur, if, if you want to be a teacher, whatever it is you want to be that, that in your eyes is successful. Because successful, you know, being successful is subjective, of course. Um, but I think from the book, you take away that it starts with you. And a lot of people will talk about success, how they got there. They didn't know how they were going to do it, but they just got there because they believed. What this book does is it breaks it down on a smaller level and tells you what to do on a day-by-day -day basis to get where you want to be, how to feel better about yourself, how to put yourself in a position to win, how to use the things that you already know to become a business powerhouse. You know, we used to have an old saying, you know, act and dress for the job that you want, not for the job that you have, or the Absolutely. opportunity that you want and not for the opportunity that you have. And my parents used to always tell me, when you lie down with dogs, you get fleas, and birds with feather flock together. So watch who your friends are because they do influence who you are. And I lied to you for, I just made that one up off the top of my head, so I, I should write that down somewhere because that's pretty good if I do so say myself. But if yeah, that was a good one. So thank you. Someone out there who wants to put together, uh, you know, a, a, a plan of action for their kids is out there, and they're looking for something. This is the book for them. It's called Turn Your Common Sense into Business Savvy. That's Turn Your Common Sense into Business Savvy. How do folks find it? Uh, it's available on Amazon. Uh, it's available on Barnes and Nobles. Uh, you can go to my website, uh, jdjosephjr.wix.com uh, forward slash jdjosephjr. Um, you can purchase it on there. Um, it's getting great reviews. Um, again, I just want to touch on it talks about starting from scratch, and I think that's where a lot of people are missing it. And they know the right principles. They just need somebody to, to, to show it to them. So hopefully this will do that for them. All right, Jonathan Joseph, Jr., thank you so much for taking out the time. Thank you for having me. Have a great one. You've been listening to Ready News Review, the podcast with America's independent voice. Rob Reddy, presented by Reading Communications Incorporated. For all the pressing news you need to know, log on to www.readynewsreview.com.